so today we will start with devops course and this is a demo session where we will discuss the various points regarding devops and the number of tools which are used in a devops so what is devops it's middleware of development and operations when developers are building code and then we are provisioning towards production level or releasing the code over there we need to maintain sdls that is software development life cycle and whenever any product is being ready and it's coming to the market level it takes much more time for the release why because developers testers for example are communicating with each other so developers are building the code testers are testing it and we need to bridge gap this communication level when we are working with the different uh, different uh, different types of teams for example we can have a operational team we can have a development team and we can have a testing team so when code is being created we can communicate with the testers team also when our code is being ready we can communicate with the operations team to the deployment level so what is devops team will be part of in between all these separate uh, configuration settings or we can have a deployment of number of services over there also we can use the different type of tools for saving the time and saving the cost at the same time so which are the tools that will be part of devops here first of all git git this type of tools are there which are considered as the open source version control system now these tools are being used when you want to save the code as we are going with the software development life cycle we are developing a code but this code should be available with the different version suppose any one particular user or developer is contributing towards code and he has or she has had added some features to the code like you are using whatsapp right and that code is present somewhere in the servers and that particular developer is added some feature like we can have 24 seven status update so this is a new feature but changes to be replicated to the code right and in that way we can have release of this code in a version at the production level suppose one more developer is there suppose this is the developer 2 and he has also adding some features to the code so changes are being implemented to the code level and then we can have another version as well when we are having this developer to be making some changes to the code from developer 1 in that case so in this way you can maintain the code on a version control system that is our git github gitlab type of tools are there that we will learn throughout the course how to how to maintain the code on a remote repository and here also we are not maintaining code on our local machine only we are also maintaining the code on a remote repository somewhere on a platform so that's a use of using git github and version control system second tool that we will learn throughout the course that will be docker or kubernetes i'm just covering basic part for understanding level so here when you are running any application on a os here we can have central libraries like we are having c code right you must have done some c cpp type of coding or java type of coding where you are importing the libraries at the header files when you are building a code at the start of this program you are having header files so what exactly you are doing you are calling for the libraries in that case so that on top of os it will provide some dependency to you and your application will be run but for example suppose you are running this on a windows system and you want to try for same code on a linux system or you want to try on a virtual machine in that case you need to build app separately 
you need to select for the libraries separately. And again, you have to code it. Again, suppose you want to try the same environment on a virtual machine. Here also dependency will be done separately. So what is the solution? Here you can build the code once and you can run it at anywhere on any operating system. And that's the technology that we are using Docker system. This is our second tool that we will learn throughout the course. When you will have some idea regarding the Docker, you can learn for Kubernetes approach. Now here, concept of containers is there. Like you can run the environment everywhere. The basic deployment unit of Docker is image here. And you can run image and you will get container. So like you are maintaining software development lifecycle for any code, within Kubernetes, we will maintain soft development lifecycle of the containers. That is on a higher level. So if you are having Docker background, you can easily run a Kubernetes over there. So this is our third tool that is container orchestration system. Then after using containerization, after learning about Git, GitHub, version control system, you can also try for CI CD pipeline. Now within CI CD, you can save code on a central repository, whether Git or GitHub or any type of platform you can try. Over there, multiple users can have a pipeline of the code. At the same time, number of issues are being resolved from the code side. And that is, uh, that is a pipeline. And here you can use Jenkins for building a CI CD. What is CI? That is continuous integration. CD is a continuous deployment. And you can go towards releasing of the code easily. So reporting will be in the meantime and also uh, you can have release of code in a very short period. That's the using of, that's the significance of using pipeline. After Jenkins, we can try for Ansible. It's our fifth tool. And for using Ansible, what is the scenario here? when we are having multiple machines, multiple host machine. And for example, suppose client is having some requirement for deploying a database to hundreds of servers. In that way, we can have Ansible type of configuration from host machine. We can connect with multiple machines and we can fire the script and we can run it. So I have got one question in the chat box. Let me check. Okay, sorry. So by using Ansible, you can go with configuration setting on a server level from the host level. And you can go with automation here. What is automation? When multiple tasks are being performed with the scripts that we call it as automation. And that is used for saving the cost and saving the time. And most of the tasks are done by the admins level, administration level. So administration takes much more time, much more part here as compared to the developers as well in case of DevOps. Now let's discuss about our six tool after Ansible, Jenkins, you can try for shape and puppet. These are also very famous tools and are used for configuration level. So here we can have configuration files. And in case when we are working on an organization level and there is a auditing for every task we are doing, also we need to maintain a governance. So terms and policies are important at that level. So to maintain governance, to maintain auditing, and to maintain terms and policies on an organization level, when different teams and people are working together, the shape of a type of configuration tools are being used. 
very important tool that we will learn within a day offs that is Terraform. So as you know that we are having different types of cloud in the market. We are having public cloud. We are having private cloud. So what is public cloud? You can take example of AWS, Microsoft Azure and GCP. These are top public cloud platforms. We call it as CES space, means cloud service provider. The service is provided to the people when we want to host an application or we want to rent a data center in that case. Now private cloud, which is used on the organization level and the combination of both that we can say that it's a hybrid cloud. Also in industry, multi-cloud is also there, which is combination of any two public cloud or three public cloud. Suppose I want to use AWS, I want to use Azure for saving the cost and providing more administration, I can use multi-cloud platform. Now, depending on the cloud platforms, when you want to try for infrastructure as a code, means from the code itself, you will try for different type of resources different type of deployment. Here you can have services like compute, networking, security, databases, and storages. You can use Terraform templates in that case. So you can create the files and from the files itself, you are running it and whatever changes will happen that is in your AWS account or your Azure account or your GCP account simultaneously. Suppose you want to use both the cloud, that type of script also you can design. So it will save much more cost from the client level. And also with a single click, you can delete the resources. That's the, using, that's the significance of using Terraform over there. So these are a few famous tools, but when you will work in industry, the tools that you, uh, the DevOps tool that you, you will use, that is totally depending on partnership from organization. Suppose your company is partner with the Microsoft Azure in that case. So you can use, for example, Azure DevOps service or Azure pipeline service or CI CD. Suppose your company is partnered with the AWS. At that level for the infrastructure as a code, you can use AWS cloud formation service. Or suppose you are having a repo service that can be also used in parallel with the Gatekeeper. So, but basic things are there. You, you should know these tools that is Git, GitHub, Terraform, Jenkins, Shape, Puppet, Ansible, and then you can navigate towards DevOps on a cloud. So throughout the course, we will also learn regarding AWS. Now, why we will use AWS? That may be a question from your side. So AWS, that is Amazon Web Services. is a public cloud platform. So whatever configuration you are needing, on an organization level to deliver your projects in terms of websites or in terms of applications to clients or customers. So either you are trying for B2B or B2C, you can use Amazon Web Services. Here you can have a renting service. You can rent for data center technologies and bill will be calculated on a monthly basis. So you can save much more time rather than buying the infrastructure and everything will be available to you. So if you are an experienced person in IT, uh, you must have known something regarding AWS. So throughout the course, we will use some AWS services for deployment of DevOps tools or DevOps configuration. On a basic level, you should you can start with AWS practice like EC2 services, which is used for launching of virtual machines, S3 service, which is used for creating the buckets. And this is on a storage level. So when I'm talking about compute, 
you can relate for EC2 service that is Elastic Compute Cloud. And you must have practiced earlier on a VMware or VirtualBox on infrastructure. So you can relate regarding the EC2 service, S3 service, which is used for storage level, like you are having a physical computer and you are having hard disk here, over there, that is for storage level. So there is a separate service that is EBS in AWS, which is used for creating a volume, which can relate can be which can be related to the hard disk. Then as you are having Wi-Fi or uh, you are having LAN connection for physical computer. Here is a separate service from Amazon Web Services. You can select for network setting, that is VPC, virtual private cloud. This comes under the network. On purpose of providing some administration, user accounts, we can have IM service, identity access management. So these basic things we can cover and later on also we can use these type of settings for DevOps tools. That's a necessary one. Now, if your company is partner with the Microsoft Azure and you are learning AWS, that's also fine because AWS is a market leader. I will also show uh, one of the research paper, white research paper, and you will get idea why we are choosing for AWS for this course. So 200 plus services are there, which are under the AWS. Documentation of each service is regarding of 2000 to 3000 pages. If you're checking for EC2 user guide, online S3 user guide, you will get details. Now I'm showing you one of white research paper and uh, that has been followed by the higher administration on organization level as these cloud services are important to provide the services to the clients and I'm searching for AWS magic quadrant now. It's just a paper from the Gartner. Now Gartner is a business media. It's not our like our entertainment media. Number of service, uh, number of research has been taken into consideration and then they are coming with the conclusion that Amazon Web Services is a market leader on a cloud platform services. Then we are having Microsoft Azure, then Google and then Oracle. So if you're selecting for infrastructure, when you want to try for DevOps tools, in organization level. Most of the cases, AWS, we can see. Or if your company is partner with the Microsoft Azure, or Microsoft, then you can have an Azure environment. But for the practice level, it's a beneficial. Also, number of opportunities is very high in case you are trying to practice on AWS. So that's why our course is designed with the using of AWS. But if you are having knowledge about AWS, you can easily learn Microsoft and GCP as well. One more thing. Here, cloud knowledge is important because on an infrastructure level, we will select it. But for learning cloud, Linux, OS, and networking concepts. These are important. Why we should learn a Linux or why we should practice on a Linux? Because the data center language is Linux. When you are having number of servers from the data centers, 99% servers are Linux because it's an open source OS. There is no charging for it. Rather than a Red Hat type of Linux, it's a subscription base and they, they are also providing some support. So there are types of Linux are there. Uh, one is depending on Red Hat based packages. One is depending on Debian based packages. Uh, for more information, you can cross check for distroswatch.com. So there are types like Red Hat, then Debian based OS and open source is also a type of Linux. Now for Red Hat, you are having various distributions like Red Hat OS, Red Hat Core OS, then CentOS and Fedora. CentOS, which is providing you free subscription. If your budget is low on organization level and you want to use same packages, you can use CentOS in that case. And CentOS is also stable uh, type of OS. Then Fedora, which is supporting for 
some general people level uh, projects release and uh, you can help people to build applications or websites by using fedora number of uh, number of settings are there uh, number of uh, configurations are there tools are there by using it you can uh, provide service to the general people and you can publish your app so that's why this uh, particular os is famous for then we are having ubuntu os which is based on debian and we are also having ubuntu server edition so throughout the aws practice we can practice for launching of ubuntu type of instances and connecting it and practicing it so linux commands are important and uh, throughout the uh, throughout the course we will try for basic linux commands then intermediate linux commands and advanced linux commands i will provide you a cheat sheet for the same so don't worry about it os knowledge is important when you want to access the os having some file permissions uh, then different type of services need to be deployed and configuration to be checked and in networking you should have some basic idea regarding osi layer so there are seven layers are present in osi layer out of which application layer which is at the layer 7 and network layer which is at the layer 4 that is the important part so these things are important uh, in case we are trying for learning an aws and on top of it we will practice for devops so that's the scenario now i'm having some diagram and representation uh, but before showing me uh, showing uh, sh before checking for that, uh, I'm just letting you know that some uh, development experience should be there uh, so that you can build the application and you can build websites and you can test it uh, within Kubernetes or Docker-like uh, Docker -like tools. But if you're not having any development experience, don't worry about it. Uh, most of the work that we will try in the DevOps, that is throughout the commands. And if you are, uh, you can clearly understand the code, development code, uh, no matter if you are no, not a developer and you can build application and you can easily integrate for different settings, uh, then this DevOps role is for you. The more scenario will be there where you will go with a lot more things. Like sometimes you will uh, try for some OS dependencies. Sometimes you are going with the integration part. Sometimes you have to connect with the infrastructure level. Sometimes you can also have pass services, that is platform as a service. So within the cloud, you can have IaaS, pass, and SaaS. This type of architecture will be there when you will have some, uh, some tools dependency. So infrastructure as a service, where you, you will mostly relate with the hardware resources. In case of pass, you can have platforms, various platforms are there. Like for example, you can take a database, which is a platform as a service. And you must have used Amazon Linux or Hotstar like application. Uh, this comes under the SaaS. So this type of architecture is there. Now, which are the positions you can apply after the uh, after this type of course, after DevOps course? You can try for Kubernetes administrator position. And there is a separate certification that is certified Kubernetes administrator from CNC Foundation, which is from Google. You can also try for AWS DevOps position where you will have hands-on with the AWS and DevOps. Uh, number of services are there, which are managed services. So when I'm talking about managed services, this will provide you extra uh, layer of management over there. For example, suppose you are practicing on Kubernetes, on the infrastructure. 
And when you are using AWS, there is a separate service that is AKS, Elastic Kubernetes Service. So we can say that it's a managed service. Configuration will be set from the AWS. So number of services are there. So you can try for cloud developer, or cloud DevOps position in that case. Also, suppose you, if you are good at infrastructure management, then you can also try for infra engineer position. And sometimes you can also try for SRE, that is site reliability engineering, if you are having hands-on experience with deployment processes. If you are good with containerization, still you can try for DevOps position as well. If you are good with the CI CD part, you can try for the cloud administration, cloud DevOps administration part or type of roles over there. So now I'm expecting the questions from you and I will sort your, uh, I, I will provide you the uh, solutions regarding your queries. So you can ask question regarding DevOps. What are the prerequisites regarding DevOps? Which are the job roles you can apply? And also if you are having some experience in IT uh, relating to that or related to your project's details, you can also ask the questions. Uh, you can try for any language, Hindi, Marathi, English, uh, but for training purposes, we will prefer for English language. You can unmute yourself and ask the questions. And if you want to add questions in the chat box, I'm also okay with it. Do you have any questions? Yes, one question is there. Uh, yes, ma'am, any questions? Yes, Salbina, Amit, Amol, Anand, Govardhan, Himina, Priti, Roshan, Rishikesh, Sai, Samruddhi, Sandeep. Do you have any questions? You can ask. I'm here to solve your queries. Okay, so whatever we have seen as a theory part, now I'm explaining with the diagrammatic representation. So you can start with learning any programming language. You can select. Uh, sir, we have some questions in chat box. It's like, uh, what is the duration of this course from Sandeep Das? Uh, what are course details? Hello. Hello. Ah, yes. Sir, what is the duration of this course? Duration of course will be at least three months. Three months. It can be maximized up to 3.5 months. Uh, but as per the practice, and we will cover some projects uh, at the uh, last of, uh, of, at the ending of uh, our course, we will go through projects like containerization, the infrastructure deployment, uh, some basic projects are also included and uh, that's why uh, the course duration will be three months. But training will be covered in a 2.5 months. And sir, we have one more question. Is this course only for freshers or any working professional? No, no, on a both level, on a both level. Freshers are also having openings for DevOps position on an intern level or entry level. So if you are uh, having AWS experience and DevOps experience, both experience will be calculated. And one more question from the same participant. And do we get option to work on live projects? Work on libraries? Live projects. 
live projects yes uh, actually uh, we don't have that much of environment because of uh, costing part as we are uh, going through the de deployment on aws uh, the bill is very high so what we can prefer uh, i will provide you the scripts for the deployment level and uh, you can sign up for your individual aws accounts uh, you can have your own deployment and uh, then you can practice on that project but uh, i will provide you the uh, support for the same in uh, if you are having any queries regarding the practice i can solve that and you can post queries on uh, uh, our official app Any other questions? Uh, sir, one more question we have in chat box. Huh. Uh, is this course available in offline edition? Yes. This course is available in offline also. Yes, offline plus online. Currently, we are going with the hybrid. So I'm also taking uh, practice from your side, expecting the practice from your side, uh, because this is a continuous learning uh, course. So whatever I will deliver, uh, uh, we can provide a recording for the same. Also the documentation part we can cover. Uh, I, I always paste the documentation on official app that will be provided to you later on. Yes, any other questions? And also, we, we do have cheat sheets. So, if you are very new to the tools and practice, uh, you can refer the documentation in that case. And uh, at least you can practice for any task three times, uh, one via um, referring the recording, one via uh, taking some your individual time. And then after the gap, you can practice. So if you are practicing three times for any particular task, your confidence will be boost and that will help you in the interviews. Uh, no, I think course do not come with the AWS certification here. Uh, but I can let you know the procedure. Uh, for um, uh, for scheduling your AWS exam after the course. Uh, no, we are not supporting for AWS certification exam. Uh, you can take more inputs from the uh, management after this session. Actually, I'm a team. Okay. Yes. This question, please. Just any other question regarding Linux or whatever tools that I have pitched regarding the configuration or if you are having your own environment at the project level and uh, uh, you can also let, let us know uh, if you have any queries related to the technical part. So here I'm showing a proper path for learning a DevOps that will be regarding, you be, you should have experience regarding any one of programming language for the software development life cycle. As I have told you, number of operating systems are there. That is Windows servers, Linux, and Unix. Then we will edit the code, whatever code that will be created by us. You can use number of editors. You must have used a VS code in that case. 
Mm, so Kriti is asking, uh, is the job will be provided from your side? Uh, management will contact you regarding that. Uh, we do have separate team for placement level. So we can have terminal settings when we are connecting from any machine to other machine. We can use terminal and SSH port 22 will be used regarding it. Then these are some web server settings when we are hosting a website. Oh, yes, Preeti is asking, do you have a jobs for freshers? Mm. Yes, some of from management team will reply to you. Yes, Anmol and Aditya will uh, reply to you. So these are the container platforms we will learn throughout the course that is Docker. And on a public platform, we are selecting for AWS. Some of networking concepts are required. Mm, Preeti is asking, uh, can I join the course? Uh, yes, you can join the course, but the query related to related to work experience. Uh, currently, I have no idea regarding that. Then we are having infrastructure provisioning. Then we are having infrastructure provisioning when we will try for Creating an infrastructure from the code. We can try for Shape Puppet, Ansible, all these type of things. Also Terraform is important. Uh, Shape Puppet, Ansible, which is used for configuration and for infrastructure deployment, we can try for Terraform. AWS Cloud Formation from AWS Services. For CICD, Jenkins is important. And for secret management, we can use Vault, which is from HashiPath. So Terraform is also from HashiCorp and Vault is also from HashiCorp in that case. Uh, after deployment of services and having some configuration, we need to maintain a monitoring over there. For various logs are being created and uh, we can cross check these logs for auditing levels too. Then for container orchestration level, we can have Kubernetes. Uh, I have let you know that Kubernetes is a container orchestration system from CNCF Foundation and Google. Uh, it's the graduated project from them. So these are the path we can follow. We can start with Git and GitHub at the start. Also from, uh, from running any basic course on any programming language. And later on, we can try for web server settings. Then container then Kubernetes part, and then for infrastructure deployment and configuration management part. Any other doubts you can ask regarding these tools? Any doubts, sir? No, from your side. All right, students, any doubt? Uh, course details and uh, syllabus or uh, any other queries about duration or placement activity, uh, you can contact with the management. Uh, also recording will be provided to you. Uh, management will contact regarding this thing. Please fill up the details for from, from the Google form.